What's up, Canna fam? It's your boy, Chris, here. Well, I'm not in the Superman Scroll app. And it's not just me. Here's Nancy. And today, we are going to be showing you guys the uh, Hearts Worm Farm. It's a farm I found in Irvine, California. And we're going to check things out. They're going to, uh, I think they have a workshop. And they're going to teach us how to do vermicompost. And we're going to go home with some worms today. So, let's get into it. I'm proud to be a midget. The only thing more intense than my midget pride is my hate for tall people, or as we like to call them, biggers. Oh, a little spot for the kids. Small power! Small power! Small power! Mexican marigolds. The flowers uh we started with. You can come in now. See that? That's mm -hmm. the soil they make using their own worm castings. Yeah. Like the bamboo. For some reason, in Central North Carolina, there's bamboo everywhere. Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out why. Kind of plants. You know what I've noticed that there's so many like flies, so many bugs. Yeah, they said that um, even bees, like certain bees, certain wild bees that don't make honey, are necessary to pollinate plants. There are lots of pollinators, and they are all special. Pollinators come in many forms, and that diversity is critical to our food supply. Pollinators include the many species of bees, beetles, butterflies, flies, hoverflies, and other insects that gather pollen from plants when they feed. Birds and bats are also involved in pollination. Together, they are responsible for the reproduction of most flowering plants, including about 30% of our food crops. These can be black and yellow, mostly yellow, all black, bluish, even metallic green. Hoverflies look like little sweat bees, but are actually just flies. Is it hovering in place? Bees can't do that. Pollinator diversity matters. The unique features of each pollinator allows them to pollinate different types of flowers. Therefore, having diverse pollinators is important to maintaining different types of plants and crops. Native bees, like the southeastern blueberry bee and the mason bee, are some of the best and most important pollinators for agricultural production. Our nut and fruit orchards depend on them. Squash bees have such an affinity for squash flowers that they sleep in them. Bumblebees are the only pollinators strong enough to open the blooms of bottle gentian, a unique wetland plant. Many fruit species in other parts of the world depend on bats for pollination. Many orchids depend on a specific wasp or moth for pollination. Learn more about pollinator identification and how to protect them at Native Plants and Pollinators. Well, 
because if I hadn't taught my my pepper plants, they would be like that. Go ahead and rub the flowers in your hand. I, I bet you it's not. Mm. Ew, right? I don't know. I don't know. These are animals. bring boobies here. Yeah, she might freak out because of the bug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Oh, right there. Bananas. So These heavy. are real bananas. It's heavy.
like a I don't know what clip dagger is, but that's what it says. Yeah. That's cool. And he said they were trying to knock this place down. The city was trying to knock this place down. Really? So as many people as they can get to come here, sign a petition, make sure they keep this place. So the, the gentleman who runs um, Farm and Food Lab, Nathan Gipple. So the Farm and Food Lab was born out of the vision of the city of Irvine in partnership with the Orange County Master Gardeners and several other uh, groups. And uh, the site is about 12 years old now. And again, it started off with just some raised hay bale beds. It uh, transitioned into some raised beds. And then as of three years ago, we were fortunate enough to uh, take over uh, with an operating contract. And we've been able to grow out the site significantly. We being solutions for urban agriculture. Uh, we're 501c3. We've been doing Farm to Food Bank in the city of Irvine here for now over 30 years. And it's just been an amazing collaborative partnership with the city, getting food to those who need it most, and also spreading education, which is part of our nonprofit's mission. So it's just been an adventure. I love that. I feel like that's what I see happening here is they're, they're coming up with different solutions for agriculture in, in urban areas. Okay. So that's um, sometimes like you'll see, I forget what they're called, but there's like two dimensional trees where they prune them in the front and they prune them in the back. So uh -huh. the tree is like- Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. over there. We saw yeah. those. It's like so, crab apples or something over there. Crab apples? Well, like an apple tree? Yeah. These are like the small ones. They grow like this big. Maybe. Yeah, but like how do you like? That's from training. training. Yeah. yeah. That's dope though, how they yeah, did it. Like he, someone like topped it right here, right took those two, branched them all out. So you can see the whole tree. Okay, that's great. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, so stuff like that. And then like, uh, how can you grow things in a small area? Or what are some things you can grow in an urban area that you didn't even know you could grow? And uh, and there was a gentleman here before, if you've seen the movie Need to Grow, the Need to Grow, um, he was here growing food for a while, um, Eric Cutter. In the middle of May last year, this was basically a big dirt field. Initial research shows there's approximately 35 square miles of that kind of space that could be repurposed just in Orange County and LA County alone. The dream of mine is that we take this and turn it into small gardens of Eden. In about 10 months, we've completely changed the face of this place and created this incredible edible garden. This farm has given me an opportunity to kind of experiment and showcase my talents and take chances. I was experimenting with vertical gardens in 2009 because a lot of my clients had said, food is a great amenity, how do we bring some food out to these islands? And I thought, well, even though you're in Bora Bora, French Polynesia, where it rains a lot, nobody's collecting water. So I started looking at these systems for them and then realized, oh my God, my own backyard is painfully in need of these systems. And I thought, you know, what if we could find vertical gardening tools, high efficiency tools, and we could get people to start using it. But uh, he's not here anymore, but he's another solutions for urban agriculture. He does a lot of like growing plants vertically mm. or, um, maybe growing plants so that you water the top plant and then water trickles down to the mm -hmm. next one and to the next one so you're saving water as well mm. so okay. that's really cool is that corn is that corn over there that looks like it mm. the thing is i'm mostly at the worm farm <laughs> 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 so i know i never really know what's going on over here okay okay so here's the two books we recommend bookstore in tustin right now Um, I, okay, I am going to get, I'm going to ask you to do a very serious science experiment. Ah, what a fine day for science. And the reason why, the, so I'll tell you what the science experiment is, but the reason why I want you to do this is because worm composting is one, the easiest way of composting, but two, composting is so important. It's so important because one, have you, any of you ever been to a landfill? Yeah. They're super stinky. Mm -hmm. And that stinky smell that we're smelling is actually toxic chemicals off-gassing into the environment, causing a heat trapping blanket around the world that's like causing heat to stay in the planet. Mm -hmm. I know some of that is carbon dioxide from the cars we drive and the airplanes and gasoline and probably mostly big business type things going on and like, you know, what the average citizen does might be a drop in the bucket, but you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, so other compounds are like methane and nitrous oxide, and these are smells that can come out of our compost piles, but they definitely come out of, um, the landfills. And so if we, instead of throwing our food in the trash and mixing all that trash and it doesn't ever really break down very well, we can break down ourselves and then we can turn that into really good fertilizer, like healthy fertilizer, like my job. I don't make a lot of money doing it, but 
one of my side jobs is to look at people's soil under a microscope and say what who's in there Thank like what you. microbes we'll are in there and when i look okay, at yeah, we'll be over. like right. miracle Thank pro you. that stuff works well but Okay, thank you. Um, cool. It just works in a different way than how a soil in a forest works. When I look at forest soil versus miracle Grow, I can see the differences. And the forest soil is teeming with life. And all these things, um, they're part of the food web. And like so, you know, they're the bottom of the food chain and they're the decomposers. Like taking all of our trash up here and turning it into life again. So compost is where trash, death means life. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very essential part of nature. Mm -hmm. And so um, so when we throw our food in the landfill, it kind of disrupts that cycle. So, um, so anyway, when we compost, instead of methane like being released, it actually gets stored into the soil and, it, and carbon gets stored, stored into the soil and then plants are healthier. And when, um, when all those soil organisms are there, they can actually help keep plants healthier and then the food we eat actually ends up being more nutritious and nutrient dense. And then, so when you have healthy plants, you have healthy people, and that's really exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm not in the camera, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So yeah, that's really exciting to me. So that's, that's why I'm here. Oh yes, yeah. there you go. Okay, that's why I'm here with you guys, and that's why, um, that's we do this as a hobby. This is like what we do for fun, telling yeah. people about compost. <laughs> now why I, like, why I want you to experiment with worm composting is because it's the easiest type of composting. It's the most hassle-free, you can forget about them, especially if you do the underground worm bins. I'm sorry about all these flies. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> it's nature. I, I get yes, it. <laughs> sure, I like that. So, um, so the underground worm bin, for example, you could use something like yeah. this and, and you could put it underground and then make your own, um, make your own um, lid. <laughs> okay, um, so the experiment is I'm going to lead you through a series of questions for fun, and a lot of times we do this uh, with right kids, oh, but perfect. adults yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. And, then, that's and um, I'm going to yeah. teach you how oh, to perfect. take care of worms. Yeah. Okay, and then, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank every you. time you build a worm bin, you're going to follow these same instructions. And then, if you forget, you can just take a picture of the instructions over here, mm -hmm. and then um, and then you, you'll remember. So, every time you make a worm bin, the first question we would say is, oh, I forgot to tell you the experiment. Sorry, the experiment is, I'm gonna give you four worms. Thank you. And you, after three months, they're gonna double in population. Mm. So, cause that's what worms do when they're happy. So if in three months, if they double in population, how many worms are you gonna have? Eight. Eight, yes. For some reason, when I do this, four worms, three months, double in population, <laughs> it really throws people off. <laughs> um, so, okay, so, oh, and then when you're done with your experiment, we're hoping that you will put it on, will mention us on Instagram or Facebook at We Compost Too. That is our nonprofit yeah. organization. If your experiment, we're hoping that you will put it on, you will mention us on Instagram or Facebook at We Compost Too. That is our nonprofit organization um, whose goal is to teach about on site composting and to build communities below and above the soil. Okay, so the first question is Do worms sleep? Okay, so unfortunately, the guy who teaches me says, I don't know. <laughs> but just in case they do, let's give them a bed. So here's the bedding. Oops, I gave you combo. Okay, here's the bedding. This is uh, it can be cocoa core, shredded cardboard, compo uh, finished compost, partially finished compost, um, just some kind of, it could be. Uh, really small broken up dead material like if you have like wildflowers and they kind of died while standing mm -hmm. and they turned yellow mm -hmm. you break them up and that could be part of the bedding too so any browns dead things or cardboard because paper is kind of a dead thing mm -hmm. okay so the bedding is browns and that's too because you want half browns and then um you want mostly browns in your worm compost because that's where they live and then you put some food in there but they don't want to be surrounded by only food 
If you surround them with only food, then your bin will start getting really stinky. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's um, you're getting too much bacteria in there and not enough oxygen. The bacteria are, there's so much food, the bacteria are multiplying so fast that they're multiplying faster than air can come into the cup. I'd like to talk about fermentation, also called anaerobic respiration. Sometimes cells need to produce energy whenever oxygen is not present. A solution to this is called fermentation, and it provides energy for cells without using oxygen. It is also called anaerobic respiration. It does produce energy, but it is less efficient than aerobic respiration that uses oxygen. There are two types of fermentation, alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. The first type I'd like to talk about, alcoholic fermentation, occurs in plants and yeast whenever oxygen is not present. The cell takes glucose, technically pyruvic acid, and it is converted into ethanol, which is a type of alcohol, and then some carbon dioxide and energy. This is how many wines and beer are cleaned. I'm sleep. Um, I don't know, but just in case it's going to bed, here's a little blanket. We each get a little warm blanket. So, um, that, I'm just putting it there for now, but eventually we'll have to take it off because we're going to add more things, but that's what it's going to look like when you're done. And then you can have a lid or not, you don't need it, but you mostly need the warm blanket. Um, and I'll tell you why. Okay, question two. Are worms cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. They like to be kept between 55 and 85 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's why we never want to keep our bins in direct sunlight. Because if we do, the, if out here at least it'll be 90 degrees, it'll be even a little bit hotter in the bin perhaps. They'll cook, they'll try, they'll, uh, if you get, if you have a big worm bin, especially if they're in black, black plastic, it tracks the heat and the sun, they'll like have a worm, uh, like a mass exodus. And you'll see all these worms crawling out and it looks really scary and sad. So. Yeah. Yes. It's like they're burning. Yeah. yeah. They're too hot, too sunny. So, um, I'm gonna protect them from the heat and from the sun. So I like to, I have two worm bins in my bedroom, which is kind of strange. <laughs> People tell me. And then I do have one outside, but it's under a tree. Oh, and then nice. I just check on it every day and I have a little thermometer in it. So I can always make sure that they never go above 85 degrees because that's okay. the hottest they should really be. Mm -hmm. now, or if you do the subsurface, you don't really have to worry about it. You can put a thermometer just in case just to check on them, but underground, they're probably gonna be fine. Okay, cool. Next question. Do worm houses need windows? Uh, yeah. Yes, they do. They All, any time of any type of worm house is going to need windows. But if it's um below ground, it doesn't matter as much. But if it's above ground, they need oxygen. So um, with this one, when you get home, you want to poke two holes down here. And all worm houses need drainage for water, and they'll need um so. But They'll need drainage just in case, but ideally, if you see water dripping out of here, that means there's too much water in it. Yeah. So no water should be dripping out. It's, it needs to be as wet as a moist, wrung out sponge all the time. So then you just spray the top a little bit. The water goes down, but hopefully never out. Mm. So um, that's why we need windows in the bottom and all around the sides just to get the oxygen in there because worms are aerobes just like us and our pets. They need oxygen too. Second question. Worms are vegan with added dietary restrictions. <laughs> but that's, it makes it kind of easy to remember the vegans. Mm -hmm. But with added dietary restrictions. So, what do vegans eat? Um, everything worms. that doesn't come from animals. Mm hmm Yeah, so, no. I don't know if worms can eat honey, though. They might be able to eat honey, but they don't eat, um, they don't eat protein, so they can't. No milk. Because y'all lactose intolerant, that's what it is. Lactose, <laughs> what? It means that Superdude is harmed by dairy products. Like ham? No, ham is meat. Dairy products contain milk. Items like butter, cream, cheese, cream cheese, and yolk. Yo, 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 Wait. We don't really put liquids in a worm bin anyway, because most of the fruits and vegetables have liquids in them. So sometimes you might spray them with water, but you don't have to. No drinks, I wouldn't recommend ever. But um, yeah, so I put cheese in a worm bin once. And then have you ever seen like a pearl necklace? It's kind of like this shape. Mm -hmm. That's what the worm looked like after it ate cheese. It ruined the digestive tract and its oh. body completely deformed mm. and it died. So worms will die if they eat cheese. Cause I, I was like, oh, little leftover salad. Just put it in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly raw veggies and fruits, they'll be the best. And then banana peels are cool, but they will attract fruit flies for mm. some reason. Like I think they lay their eggs in the skin, in the peel. So I get a lot of fruit flies, but it, I've heard that if you don't use the banana peels, you won't get nearly as many fruit flies. Um, and that's also why when we feed, we'll like we'll move the food to the side or move the bedding to the side, put some food in here and then cover back up and then you'll get less flies too. Okay. 
Okay, so that was. Um, okay, so what are some of the foods that worms can eat? Kale, broccoli, carrots, apples, bananas. Yeah, okay. The coffee grounds? Tomatoes. Oh. Tomatoes, yep. Oh, dietary restrictions, I forgot. We don't give them a lot of citrus. Let me actually read what are the restrictions. I don't give them salt. I don't give them citrus. Um, I don't, no, no meat. They'll die if they eat meat. Um, there's probably another one. I, forget. I don't really add oils either. So I don't do a lot of cooked food. I mostly do raw. I should call them raw vegans with added, ter added dietary restrictions. <laughs> okay. Worms take bites of your food scraps because they're actually getting their nutrients from the bacteria and fungi and other organisms that they're eating. So, the question is, are bacteria good or bad? Yeah, yeah, there's good and bad bacteria. So like there's bacteria, like if I don't wash my hands, I might have like E. coli on my hands mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know where that comes from actually. I think E. coli is everywhere, but there's some harmful versions of it. Um, and then there's good bacteria, the kind in our gut microbiome, right? And it's supposed to be good to help us digest our food. So there's good and bad bacteria, but the cool thing about worms is their bodies are covered in beneficial bacteria. Ooh, the, the, a human and plant beneficial bacteria, I should say. Because maybe those, ben, those bacteria are beneficial somewhere else, but not to humans and plants. So their, their job in the ecosystem is to clean the soil. And so like when we when animals poop on the ground, there's maybe some like parasites or pathogens in my poop. Like if a worm were to eventually eat it, everything that goes through the worm or everything that touches the worm actually is clean. So like um, scientists have done experiments where they, they smear a petri dish with E. coli or salmonella. And then they have a worm crawl across it. And then they put that pe take a worm off, put the petri dish under the microscope. And wherever the worm crawled, there is no more pathogen. Yeah. That's why I was like, look, it's like a uh, hand sanitizer yeah. for my hands. <laughs> when I was holding the, the, the worms were super, super slimy when I was holding them. To stuff. So yeah, they're really clean. So that's the one good thing about holding them is like, it's, it makes it less scary. And the second thing that less it makes less scary is um oh I should actually uh, do worms have teeth? No, no they don't have teeth, <laughs> so they don't bite. <laughs> okay, so because they eat bacteria and they don't have teeth, we have two things here. We have good garden soil. Now, one teaspoon of good garden soil has how much bacteria? What do you think? Uh, like ten thousand or something. Yeah, really, it has a, about a billion. So if I were to grab a handful of soil, okay, actually, did you can I put a handful of soil in your hand? I want to ask you a question. This is fun. Okay. There's about how many people are on planet Earth? Seven billion. Yeah, about seven billion. There's about seven billion living things in your hand right now. Cool. That is cool. Like, wow, yeah. I'm, I'm holding an entire world of people. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or yeah. organisms. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's a good biblical reference. So yeah, so there's about a billion uh, bacteria in a tablespoon of soil, but there's other organisms too, but a billion bacteria. So worms, worms eat bacteria every day. So, uh, but we only want to feed them a million. So if we were to feed them a million, I'm going to try to only get a million on my spoon. When would I have to stop if the whole teaspoon was a billion? This is a fun math question for kids. We're always trying to stem it up, you know? Add the stem. Yeah, like, actually it's a thousand. A million is a thousand. A thousand times a million is a billion. So, a thousand of a teaspoon is probably like that much, right? Maybe even less? So three grains of sand will have a million bacteria. I think I just gave you five million. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll have to add a million to each of you. Oh, I almost added like a more. more. Okay, yeah. I mean, I might as well give you more, right? Well, I don't want it to go anaerobic though. They probably won't. They can't. They won't overpopulate as long as they don't have too much green foods. Okay, so we added a million bacteria. Okay. And okay, and now we need to add the sand. Okay, if worms don't have teeth, how do they chew? They're kind of like chickens. 
so they just gulp it all down? They gulp it down and then they have a gizzard and they have to eat the sand. Mm. And it like grinds it up. Yep. So there you go, you need some sand. So whenever you make a worm bin at home, a bigger one, can you eventually make a bigger one if you do? You need some sand, you need some soil, just to inoculate it just a little bit. And then also worms need calcium to digest their food. So what are some foods that you could feed worms that would give them calcium? Because there's some foods, just vegan foods, you could feed them. It's okay if you don't know, because I didn't know. Eggshells. I don't even know for sure if I'm saying the right one. I... Eggshells? Yeah, eggshells. Um, can you use the... Uh... Eggshells, but you only use a pinch, because if you add too much eggshells, they will melt. The worms will melt. Really? It's very basic, supposedly. This is according to Oregon State University. I don't know if they're... There's a document online, but Oregon State University, they said too much calcium carbonate and your worms will melt. I never tried it myself. But it'll raise like the pH or something? Uh, yeah. Yep. It'll raise it. But you were about to ask another question. Um, could you use ground up like, uh, like crab meal or, or seashells like shrimp? Oh, like oyster shells? Yeah, something like that. Probably the shells. As long as it's not the body, I think. I think the body, if there's like protein in it, I, I think that would be bad for worms. But I don't know. Worms eat, it's like weird because like in nature, I don't think they eat the, the things that are bad for them. Or maybe, maybe other things eat those things first. Like maybe flies get to the dead body before the worm does. And maybe that's why the worms don't get sick. But when I've, when I've actually fed worms around the meat or cheese, they died. And their bodies looked horrendous. So I think in the bin, they get a little confused or something like that. So you'll add a little bit of, you could add eggshells or um, I think you can, uh, I think broccoli and kale leafy greens have calcium in them too. Okay, next question. Let's see, do worms have a nose? Do they have a nose? Yeah, do worms have a nose? What do you think? I would think so. Nope. No, I said no. They gotta smell where the food is. Well, if they don't, then how do they breathe? <laughs> yeah, they breathe through their skin. Earthworms breathe through their skin. They have no lungs or other respiratory organs, but that's really for the best as they do spend most of their time underground surrounded by soil. Their skin is no match for rain, however, as earthworms are prone to drowning. And so they always need to be moist. So they breathe through their skin. And so we spray two to three sprays every two to three days. Newspaper, it's um, compost and newspaper mixed together, and maybe some wood chips. We did shredded cardboard and shredded newspaper, but not many people can get a hold of shredded cardboard. You have to get a 20 sheet shredder, paper mm. shredder, mm. shredded cardboard. Okay, so yeah, keep it as moist as a wrung out sponge and then water it like two to three times a week. Okay, uh, next question Do worms have eyes? No. Okay, they do, yes, and no. So they don't have actual eyeballs like us, but their whole skin is like an eyeball. Mm. So when they're out in the sunlight and they're wiggling around, they're trying to get into the dirt, it's because they're all their skin is like, their whole skin needs sunglasses because they're like, ah, it's my eyes! It's so bright out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's why they're always trying to stay underground and away from the light. Because one, that's their home, but two, I guess they evolved that way or whatever. Um, they're, they're just naturally that way. And, they don't want to be in the light, so their mm. skin is very sensitive to the sun. So it has the same cells in their skin that we have in our eyeballs. They don't see shapes and stuff, but they do see shadows. Mm. Okay, next question. Are worms dirty? Yes. No. Yes and no, you're both right, because they're technically crawling through dirt, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny that. But like, no, because they're not covered in harmful bacteria. bacteria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. So. I will give you four worms. Worms double in population every three months. You will have eight worms at the end of four months. Three months. Sorry. 
So now you have to do your pledge. Um, and before we did the pledge, did you know that Charles Darwin studied worms for the last 20 years of his life? And people just thought he was like going old and senile. They're like, yeah. why is he studying worms? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is like kind of random. Yeah, and he's like, there's something important about these worms. <laughs> They're like, he's crazy. <laughs> They're like, he, he discovered something good once, but now he's like, I don't know Lost about it. this guy, he's into worms. Uh, but yeah, he studied them for the last 20 years of his life and he, he knew that there was like, he was convinced that they were intelligent and there was there was something important about what they were doing. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, so we tell you to raise your right hand. And say, I promise. I had no idea this was a cult. No way. Although I will say the term cult is a little judgmental. I would say the same thing, yeah. Not knowing the full doctrine. I promise. I promise. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader. To take care of my worms. To, to take, take care, care of my, my worms. worms. Feed the worms my food scraps. To feed, feed the worms, worms my food scraps. scraps. And to spray them wa with water. To spray, to them, spray with them with water. water. Two to three times a week. Two, Two to three, three times, times a week. week. And love my worms forever. And love, love my worms forever. Ha! Got it! Thank you. Oh, you know what? I, I did this in the last demo too. I forgot to do the food one. Because I told you that they're vegans, but I didn't tell you, I didn't have you feed them. So I'm sorry, I screwed up. I missed this step twice in a row. So <laughs> once a week, you will feed them one tablespoon of food scraps, but or a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon is fine. So this is coffee grounds. They can eat coffee grounds. So you just kind of put them in and then cover. Mm. So coffee grounds once a week, but you can also do, but just this volume once a week, carrot tops, apple, whatever you want, mm. vegan food. And then you cover up your bin, keep them out of the light. And then um, what you can do for now is you could do it like this while you're traveling. <laughs> and then keep them out of the heat. Okay. Like, oh, but I didn't put the worms in there. <laughs> oh, good. Oh man, I'm all over the place, I'm sorry. Okay, so now I need to give you four worms. One, two. It actually doesn't matter if you have exactly four, just as long as you count them before uh, when you start. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five. I can't separate them because one won't move, so I'm just going to be five. I don't want to. Oh, actually. actually, that one did separate at the very last moment. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then you guys can have a contest. Keep yeah. them healthier, longer. Yeah. Okay, and you might even see worm eggs in there eventually. They look like little fish bait, like a little round ball. I saw one earlier today, but we took it out. I don't see anything in here right now. And the smaller worms that are attached to them are those baby worms? Okay, so there's two types of worms. The baby ones would be the really... Um, so here's like a kid worm and a, and a toddler worm. Mm. And then a baby one will look like this, but smaller, but then there's white worms in there. Those are called Incatreas, and that's another type of worm. And they just show up in worm bins a lot. They're a sign that John has been feeding a little bit too much greens. Mm. So, but they're not bad. I think they're, some people really like them too, but um, we just don't have pure, just one worm. You're, you're gonna have other stuff in there too. You're gonna have little springtails, maybe some little beetles. Mm. I've used nematodes before, and it helps. Yeah, oh, beneficial nematodes. Um, That's awesome. See, I was going to ask you. Yeah, so they I just got this one in. Yeah. Would, would those appear in here like that naturally? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're yeah. not nematodes in there. Say, okay, they gave me yeah, because there's a, it's like the, you know, oh, the so circle of like the linking so where there's like one and the lining to antelope. Yeah, I've said that. I'll tell you what I Yeah, the lining to antelope and the antelope eats the grass. Because the dot line dies and becomes the grass. And then the leaves can come out. So like nematodes. So and the bottom said, feeders, the rabbits, the rabbits are the bacteria the and fungi, but yeah. just don't let kind of, and then yeah. um, and protozoa eat the bacteria, bacteria. So the nematodes eat the protozoa, was reading and earthworms eat the nematodes, um, about, like, and so it's always who's eating who. But then the earthworms, it's a web though, because it's not a chain, because earthworms also eat bacteria, and earthworms eat protozoa, so it's like whoever they can 
Whoever so, yeah, a worm can, can suck up in the mouth, want. they'll eat anything. Um, I only have like three, but, uh, you know, but at the bottom it does get little <laughs> yeah. stinky. Okay. But remember, like, compost is where I don't like putting a lot of water in Where there. death like, and life meet is like where the compost is happening and like, that's where you those soil microbes are turning decay into new life. I don't know why they give you, I guess perlite is to block the hole, I guess. My boss doesn't like using it. Hopefully, I'll get like experience. Oh, I want to learn how to grow um, um, mushrooms. But I can give you like, bedding. Uh, Ooh! Lion's mane mushrooms and stuff so, yeah, like that. Yeah. And then here's that. How to take it on your worms. You can eat this if you want. Okay. This is, uh, if you want to post your results, like we kept it on our worms for three months. Um, If you want to share it on social media. Yeah, I, I have like a, a small YouTube channel and I, was, I saw this place and I was like, yeah, I'm going to come over here and check it out. Awesome. We are, uh, we're trying to, I mean, we just got our EIN. We're a non-profit. Our non-profit name is called We Compost Too. Okay. Because so, our bodies compost as well. So, so okay. at first his logo was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and people didn't get it. Yeah, nobody got it, but that's why it's called the compost too, like as well. Okay. So it'll be easier to Yeah, that's okay. okay. That's cool. Yeah, that's what I think. Thank you. Yeah, this was really informative. Yeah. He said that we're trying to knock this place down. The city was trying to knock this place down. Really? So as many people as they can get to come here sign a petition, make sure they keep this place. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be cool to um, make my own worm castings. This reminds me of home. Like when you're going to the country, you smell that manure and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a worm bed. You see they got all of the food that they're not gonna keep. And the worms should just come up and nibble on it. Or if something else nibbles on it, poops in there, the worm will eat its poop. It's crazy. Well, she said, he said that they were trying to take this place, this whole place out? Yeah, they're trying to make a parking lot or something out of it. Something stupid. I think we can come back here. 